and welcome back to another season of to hell and back i cannot believe that we're actually back guys we're actually back this is episode one of season two of to hell and back if you did not catch season one it's right here you don't have to stress you don't have to feel left out it's definitely here a huge shout out to mupandi studios because that's where we're actually shooting season two off to hell and back. Now, my ninjas, today's story is one that was highly requested. I had so many of you guys actually tagging me on TikTok. And of course, it's about Joe. Hi. Hi, ninja. Hi. How are you, gorgeous? <laughs> I'm good. And how are you? I'm fine. Thank you. You look so beautiful. Thank you so much. I love the sparkle. Same to you, eh? Thank you. <laughs> I love, I love, I love. Thank you. I did my own makeup, by the way. I'm learning from my daughter. And I'm proud, you know, because I always say to people, guys, learn skill. I also did my own makeup, by the way, you know, but we're in a professional level now. (laughs) You'll get here. You'll get here. (laughs) Don't worry. Very soon you'll be here. Well, anyway, I do have to say thank you so much because I actually shot you a DM on TikTok and um, I wanted you to actually come to the show because I had so many people that were taking me that like, oh, I mean, we need her. We need her. How do you feel being the one to open season two of To Hell and Back? <laughs> it's a lot of pressure. Is it? And um, yeah, I'm not in the space of media and all that. Mm-hmm. So yeah, it's a lot of pressure. But I'm also humbled mm-hmm. and um yeah happy to share the authenticity i hope it comes through mm-hmm. of the experience my lived experience so nee. i thank you so much for having me it's you're also welcome and thank you for pre- being here. To be here i'm very happy it's you're such a warm person by the way thank you such so much. a warm person you know we had a bit of a hiccup today but like literally you're just the best honestly so thank you, thank you so much. now of course, I know, like, me just would eat me up if I did not ask you first. Like, just go ahead and tell us about yourself, you know, who you are, where you're from, if you're comfortable, you know, just a bit of your background. Wow, long story. Mm-hmm. <laughs> My background is quite um, interesting. Mm-hmm. So, I'm Joalani mm-hmm. Sosotu. It's a very well-known Sosotu name, but Joe is easier. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm a daughter, firstly, because most, um, both of my parents are still alive, so I'm their daughter. Uh-huh. I'm a sister to my siblings. Uh-huh. I'm a mom to my daughters. Uh-huh. Um, I'm a woman of prayer. Uh, Gugogo, Tassili. Okay. Oh, and is it? I'm a prophetess. Okay. So, Garabella, Kafodisa. So, um, yeah, I'm a, I think the business aspect of it, I don't necessarily identify myself as such, uh-huh. but I'm also a businesswoman. I'm a qualified engineer. I'm an employer. Uh-huh. I'm a philanthropist. Uh-huh. Um, yeah, I'm a liver of life. I enjoy life. I, <laughs> and you're a gorgeous, gorgeous human being. Okay? Thank you so much. Do not so, leave that out. Yeah, I'm a kind human being. Mother you to are. My children. Yeah. You are. Mm. You are. How many kids do you have? I have three kids. You have three daughters. No. Okay. Um, you said I'm a mom of my daughters. <laughs> no, I'm a mom of my three kids. Oh, your yeah. three kids. Okay. Uh, so I have two daughters mm-hmm. and one son. And one son. Baby boy. Baby boy. My favorite. Ah! Imagine, sorry, guys. Sorry, no, no. Ah! But you know, you know, it's the last one. Ah! It's the, it's the last one. Oh. It's the I last. last Last born for now. Mm. Oh, okay. And like he better you know. enjoy that last born last favorite born position now, now because another favorite might actually come. Whoever know. is the last born is the favorite know. of the family, which makes sense anyway, which is fair, mm. you know. Yeah. Mm. But anyway, um, I obviously contacted you because you st- you started actually sharing your story on TikTok, you know. Um, do you mind actually just sharing that story with us? You know, what was the reason why you started opening up about your experiences that you actually faced? Um, yeah. 
Mm, so you asked me firstly where I'm from. Uh -huh. I didn't touch that part. Oh yes. So I was born in Winbeck. Winbeck is a very small town uh -huh. on somebody's way uh -huh. to Bloemfontein. Oh okay. But um, my parents split when I was young, uh -huh. and subsequently I was raised by my dad's older brother, Wabam Kolo and Tatamo Kolo, in Kwakwa. Wow. So I'm the Kwakwa. You're a Kwakwa girl. Okay. <laughs> in, uh, from nine uh -huh. and my younger um, years, I was in Winberg. Yo, so what made me share my story? I think we go through experiences. Uh -huh. And some of the experiences that we go through, they make us embarrassed. Yeah. And they shouldn't be. Yeah. They shouldn't be making us embarrassed. It's what the experiences that we went through. But that they don't define who we are, and neither are they saying anything wrong about what we did. You know, for example, if uh, you go through an unfortunate experience of rape, or any experience or abuse, like, uh, yo, Kandi, what did I do to this guy, and so yeah. on and so on, and you embarrassed, you hide it. So that was the one reason. Two, people think that women of high value I regard myself as a high value. Mm. I'm a qualified engineer. I mm. got married as an engineer, working for one of the biggest oil companies. I was an wow. exec. I sat, I sit on boards. But emotional, financial, and almost physical abuse, it happened to me. And most often, as women of that caliber, we hide what happens in our homes because we embarrass good you. What are people going to say? Can this be happening to me? And so on and so on. And we suppress the experience that we live when we get home. So at work, you find that you are high power, dynamic, mm. delivering, you have teams reporting yes. to you, that was me. Yeah. But you go home, you are humiliated, humbled, walked over, and we allow that to happen to us. And because that has happened to us, then we make it our reality. You know what, this is just who I am, I'm going to be embarrassed about it, I'm going to hide it. So for me, it's taking my, my power back mm. and owning my narrative. And wow. knowing that I did go through that, but also I'm one person, um, I don't wish to go through something and not share it, either be academia, either be anything. I think there's always a place for someone to learn something. Mm. And then na, na, uh, nobody taught me, nobody told me about marriage and emotional abuse and so on and so on. So I think we are now with the social media and everything Yay. in a space where younger women and even women are age who are experiencing what we've experienced yeah. to learn something. And they're talking. And so now you also start to realize, oh my gosh, that was actually financial abuse. That was emotional abuse. That was this and that. I also got to learn that I was actually also being financially abused through social media, you know, because especially in, in black households, it's not spoken because it's like, ah, it's, this is how marriage is, you know, you should just go ahead and continue. But, you know, you you touched on something that is very, very important because I have actually seen this. You find that there are certain women that are like high power, you know, very up there. They do everything when they're at work, you know, they're very strict, but they go home and they're literal doormats to their husbands, you know. Um, how would you say that that made you feel? Like when you, you were not at home, you were at work, did you ever feel like you had to now overcompensate because you feel like maybe someone knows or someone suspects? Um, I think for me, I equally almost valued my work um, position uh -huh. as almost something that in my private life, society sees me as such. So I'll be point blank. Um, as a director, you go home, you think that society, my Kelwani next door, and your helper, your anything, still sees you as a director, right? Mm. So you are able to say, yo, guys, I'm suffering. Yeah. You're able to, to you know, speak to your cousin, say, hi, guys, hi, dear boy. Because then you see yourself in the same light in both ways. So you are right in that um, one does often compensate at home because you hide things such that the persona, <sighs> I repeat, the mm. persona mm. that you are at work is the same persona <coughs> that you reflect to society. You book holidays, you post happy pictures because at work that's who you are. You mm. get awards and so on and so on. I worked for all the old majors, mm. most of them at least. Okay. And the persona that you reflect there, you are one of the first black engineers, you're happening, mm. you're this. You, 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 the same persona you want society to perceive. And also I realized that um, with my ex, at least with my experience, that the more robust and the more in your power 
in my power at least, I uh. was at work, the more he'll make things that humiliate me, that crumble me to say, here in my house, you are the wife, so you shall walk underneath me, I shall walk all over you. So I think if you don't know your worth, I know people say, oh, welcome to know your worth, uh. but in reality, if you don't know your worth and you don't know your power, you get home, the power that you have attained at work or elsewhere, it's stripped completely. Yeah. Somebody will humiliate you and make you feel so worthless mm. to take that power away from you. Mm. So I must I can say that I lived a double life. Yeah. <laughs> to be honest, you had to. at work, I was wearing irons, mm. driving a, a sedan, blah blah blah. Hey, and maybe I was a bully. At one stage, at, at work, work, right? Yeah. Oh my goodness, and that's I what I, that. I, I. That's why that that was when I was talking about like the overcompensation that actually happens. But before we actually get to that, I want us to basically just start off almost like at the beginning. How did you meet your ex now ex husband? Right? Mm. Yes. How did you meet him? <laughs> I'm laughing, so I have to laugh. Okay, pardon me. Like mm -hmm. the experiences that I go through, I went through. Ne? Mm -hmm. Now that I'm older and mm -hmm. more mature, I'm thinking, goodness, how dumb was I? Hey, I how think you were just I? young. But anyway, it's also that I forgive myself. Mm. I forgive my younger self, and mm. I'm like, girl, it was what it was. And yeah, um, it's an experience. Yes. You know, you're not so dumb after all. It's an experience, of right? Of course. So. I grew up in Winberg. Mm -hmm. I was in my primary school years, and then I went to Kwakwa. My parents split, so mm -hmm. my dad's older brother <coughs> and the wife, uh, Umam Kuru, they're both late. We go to So I married to Zulu, so I speak both. Okay. Um, uh, mm. And they understood that when, um, in an unfortunate event, that the family is split and so on and so on, the family, you know, will come on board to say, let us help you. Mm. So my mother, was still is she's 73 now mm -hmm. a domestic worker okay and she was raising these three kids alone the father left and the father was playing with other women and has lots of children you know the story yeah and of most, most of fathers yeah. yeah most fathers be absent <coughs> him being there him being mm. there and him having other kids so when the unfortunate event or eventuality that my parents split then i got to stay in Kwakwa. Mm. And I was raised by Oon Tatimulwaka and my mamkulu, my dad's older brother and the wife. I um, went to a good school, good family, loving, nothing much. And um, very stable family. You know, mm. Uwamkulu was a principal, my Ugogo, the wife, Uwamkulu was a teacher, I had five kids, um, loving family, completely very supportive, um, went to a good school. Um, up to, all the way up to matric. Yeah. So I met the guy <laughs> when I was about 16, but it was like a pen pal type of a love, you know, okay. it was not intimacy. How old was so he so. though? He's five years older. Okay. So I was like 16 or so. He was and he like was like 21. 21. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And he was staying with relatives as well. He was attending a computer college. Uh, I think from this point onwards, because he was to me, <laughs> let me just call him the guy. Mm, the guy. So <clears> I met the guy. Through uh, I was best friends with a cousin like mm. the cousin, mm. the gym type thing, and I'll go see type thing, and the guy would ask for my numbers, and then and then my numbers at home. I mean back then we didn't have cell phones. Oh yes, I'm 45. By the way, I don't hide it. Okay. So I didn't want to <laughs> ask because no, I don't. They hide. say it's rude mm, no, to I'm ask 45. a woman's age. I'm 45. You're a very young, 45 uh, year I'm old. Gracefully, I turned 45 recently. Oh wow. Yeah. So. Um, the guy will ask for my numbers, hey, ing, 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 at home, mm. because back then we didn't have cell phones. So eventually gave him my number. It was a pen pal type of a date, a completed metric. He was doing computer studies in Kwakwa. Uh -huh. So he came up to Jobek to, uh, to work. Jimmy comes to Jobek. I'll tell you why I say that. Uh -huh. And then now I went to Cape Town to study engineering. Uh, I was quite smart. Mm -hmm. I mean, you are <laughs> smart. I, have to say so. mm -hmm. um, I thank God for that, for the mm -hmm. brains. Mm -hmm. And I also thank my mother, my uncles, Womngani, and also the, my second parents, who were quite strict for maths and science subjects. Yeah. So it pushed me to study engineering, mechanical, one of the few back then, and came up to Jobek to do um, find work. I found work when I was still studying. Okay. So I came up to Joburg and we connected now yeah. as adults. 
is mm. as uh, he was, I think, now 25, mm. 6. And you are like was, 18, 19? No, I was I done my degree in Cape okay. Town after 18 years, oh. after being 18. Okay. So I was like 21 okay. or so. So came up to Jobek, he's 25, he's 6, I'm like 20, 21. Mm. And uh, yeah, 21. And I'm dating the guy we are now dating. So it's not like I had a wide experience of dating. I didn't have. To be so that was the only man on earth you had ever dated. Yeah, the the guys I dated high school, you know, to be like a pen pal. Type I mean, like yeah, no, was, those are not they really. Yeah, and yeah and I know how that and is. That. <laughs> and that's the awkwardness of like, yeah. it was nothing much. So yeah. it was, he the was first actually your first, guy, yeah. My first, yeah, the first serious guy I dated. Um, and the year that I turned 22. Uh, I was working for one of, one of the old companies, I won't say it, in Rosebank. Mm. And um, I got pregnant. Um, growing up, I'm sure it's an experience uh, to some of your viewers that we don't get to talk to our parents about or mothers. Yes. Especially if you, didn't, you were not raised by your mother. Yeah. Like I wasn't. You can't talk to your mother. You don't know what is family planning. You don't know what is what and so on and so on. Mm. And I think that it's not only just that. I think it, it's the olden mothers. You know, even mm. even though you were growing up with your mom, they would just feel like if they talk to you about family planning, it means they're saying go and actually be active. Mm. You understand? So mm. they wouldn't, which would be horrible because when you do... Unfortunately, you fall pregnant immediately. You don't know anything, you know. Mm. Mm. So, and thank you for that. Hey? I mm. think it's it's an interesting insight that it's not necessarily not staying with your mother, but yeah. it's the older mothers. It's the general. older mothers in yeah. general. They are different from the n n new generation because, I mean, we also grew up with our moms. They never wanted to have that talk. <laughs> yeah, the talk. <laughs> so, yeah. so, yeah. So, I didn't know much about family planning. It was the guy. And we'd been dating for like a year or so, uh. and poof, I fell pregnant. And um, we were staying in a house in Kempton Park. Um, he had bought the house, so I was jointly contributing to the bond of the house. It's a small apartment. Okay. And uh, yeah, I fell pregnant. And <laughs> I was asked this question last week, mm -hmm. and I will laugh about it. I'm really going to laugh about it. Okay. Um, did the guy propose? Mm -hmm. no. <coughs> no. I'm the one that I saw Ari. He just said I'm going to send <laughs> yes. the family, the people home. There's no ring, there's no need down on the floor, nothing. I'm the one. Wow. And I think the way my inbox is so flooded, ne? Mm. <laughs> as much as I love my experience, yeah. I put it out there. There are a whole lot of other women that are going through the same or who mm. went through the same. Yeah. So, yeah. so anyway, the guy didn't propose. I remember we were sitting in the bedroom. And I was nauseous. I'd been to the doctor over the weekend that I'm pregnant. And he said, yo, hi. I might as well... But he was speaking to Sotun. Mm. Uh, I might as well send my uncles uh, to see your parents for local negotiations. And by the way, I can't write to Sotu because I did Sizuru at school. Uh, ish, I must write it in English and ask someone to convert it for me. Mm. Yeah? Now I was working, he was working as well. And um, weekend, if you can, uh, if you, I was going to go home, I was planning to go home. Like my maternal grandmother was still alive. Okay. And I needed to go tell her, yeah, I'm pregnant. I'm pregnant. And I'm 22, right? And it's my first job, my first employer. Keep pregnant. Like, and you know, black tax, I must be uh, I keep pregnant. Yeah. Like, anyways, <clears throat> so, you know, I needed to go cry. My maternal grandmother, I needed uh. to go to the house. Things are now here, mm. yeah. So, and shame, the poor guy wrote the letter, and then I don't know who he got to translate. And then I was given the letter myself, delivering my own request for marriage. Corona, hmm. without being asked on the hmm. knee. There was no popping of the champagne, no wine, no ice cream, not even chicken licking, not even, no. Sorry for the brand name. But, <laughs> but, but do, not you, even. do you also think that maybe the fact that that time contributes? Because remember, like that, that has to have been over 20 years ago now, yeah. right? It's 20 years ago, two. yeah, 20 years ago, I think that's how men used to do it. Like, they, they, they never, especially black men. I think I do applaud our black brothers now, you know, they are copying <laughs> the white people, but they hold knee down, will you marry me? Mm. 
because back then I know of people that you were with your boyfriend today, you don't even know, you get home, there's a letter, they're calling you, there's a letter that came in to say, I want to marry you, and it's something that they ne he never even discussed with you. So I think that maybe it also has to do with the time frame of that time, I don't know. It may have. I think for me here, the fundamental mm. is the commitment to say, I love you. Yes. He, like he, a he, gesture. He, he could have done that for lying on, um, on the bed, looking mm. up and say, girl, now that you are pregnant, I love you mm. and I want to marry you. That was not uttered. Mm. So it's not about there were balloons. Oh, yes. Is, not, that, that is just an And the fact one. that he but said, the fundamental. I might as well. well like, oh, yeah, that's that uh, summer. Uh, yeah, yeah, that one. That one. I might as well. No. So that I may as well just. Ah, no. Yeah, so I don't no. think it was the fact that he looked me in the eye and said, I love Let you. Let us build a family. Yes. I love you. Or can we please build a family together? He didn't say please. But did say, he used to actually say I love you back then? It was right. He'll say that mostly on the phone. He mm. used to call me a lot. Okay. He said that over the phone. But you know when you know about emotional unavailability, mm -hmm. it's something that I only learned in now. Mm. Having gone to school, having attained masters, now busy with my PhD, it's something that I learned recently that. Sometimes we date people who themselves are bruised, mm. who themselves have childhood traumas, who are not emotionally available. Mm. No? And you know, we expect love Them, from yes. her to love us. So I think he had always been, still is, mm. emotionally unavailable. unavailable. But did you feel loved? Um, then, when you're pregnant and he's about to like, you know, marry you and everything... At that time when you were dating, did you actually feel that, oh, I'm so loved by this man? I didn't feel that. I felt um, it was my first pregnancy. Mm. My morning sickness was the worst. Mm. I felt a great sense of irritation. It was okay. red flex. Okay. Um, I was not crying. Okay, <laughs> don't. Please. I'm going to ruin my makeup. <sighs> okay. Makeup that is okay, okay. Now okay. you're taking me to something Sorry. that I buried so deep in my subconsciousness, okay. right? Mm -hmm. But I'm going to talk about it. Mm -hmm. I remember when I was pregnant, I think I was about... Five months pregnant, mm -hmm. or going for six months, it was winter. Okay. Like June, July. Mm -hmm. remember? And my daughter was born in December. So I think it's end of July to August. Mm -hmm. And we stay in Camden Park. Mm -hmm. And I was working for this oil company. And I had taken debt because mm -hmm. I had bought my mom a house. Okay. So that was my first year's debt. And I was contributing 50 50 with him to pay for the place we stayed in. 50 yeah? 50? Yeah, 50 50 girl. Yo. So, um, and I was feeling dizzy and dehydrated. It was in the evening after work. And the um, apartment had two floors. Mm. So it was downstairs and upstairs. It was a duplex, basically. It was a duplex. I was looking for the way. Thank you mm. for the way. It was a duplex, small mm. duplex. Right? Yeah. Outside parking, nothing fancy, but mm. not penthouse, guys. Mm. Duplex. Yeah, duplex. With those wooden staircases. Okay, that have gaps in those, uh, they, they look brownish, <laughs> reddish brownish. Brown, yeah. 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 They are the outskirts of Kempton. <laughs> of course. So I was feeling dizzy, hazy. Um, I only realized then, or knew after the test, that I was suffering from anemia. Oh. So I was dizzy. And as this guy, <coughs> You know, I need water with ice because I was mm. feeling, you know, claustrophobic, yeah. sweaty, feverish. And with ice. I said, no, <gasps> go get it yourself. What? Yeah. And I walked from the bedroom and by the time I reached the second stair, stay, I fell and I tumbled. <gasps> and I broke <laughs> this finger, I was dislocated. <gasps> And if you look at me, <laughs> show the camera will show. But I've got a sky here. I've got about six. Oh yes, about, I see that. Yeah. But it's very faded. Because, yeah, yeah. And yeah. Because it's right on my eyelash yes. line. And I did the micro of course. Yeah. Today. But yeah. So. And I what tumbled. about the baby? I fell, and the baby survived. Wow. And he jumped in the car, took me to Edenville Hospital, because I was pregnant, and I was not on medical aid. I was paying BAM in my medical aid. Uh, for serious accidental what what mm. because I was paying debt you know for my parents house and paying 50 50 and with this 50 man 50. that is my first job Yo. so I was stitched um go in vainly and then they put a plaster so that was the first red flag but did I stay again you stayed I stayed but so imagine there was no love there was no love yeah. when I gave birth my daughter was born 
I'm protecting her name for mm-hmm. other reasons. Um, I won't say exact bed date, mm-hmm. but she was born around the 20th of December. Okay. And um, my ex-mother-in-law came, and it was her friend's birthday on that date. Mm-hmm. And I was admitted on the same date mm-hmm. because I had cramps and mm-hmm. so on and so on, you know. I was bleeding, my water didn't break, I was bleeding and so on and so on, so he took me to the hospital. He left me there, <gasps> went home, but Nike go private hospital now, my Bitcoin 8 has come to its senses. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he go private hospital, he left me there and was um, accompanying the mother or taking the mother <gasps> to the friend's to party. To the friend's party. The mother came all the way from Free State. <coughs> And Sorry, I, guys, I gave birth in his absentia. He was not there. So when he came back, the baby was born. I had a complex delivery. I tore there. <laughs> you know, but I didn't know. We might mm-hmm. know. So, stitches. Stitches. And all that. So I gave birth to my daughter at the age of 23 all alone. <gasps> yeah. Yeah. And I was married already because I'm married in July. And I'd agreed to marry him in... April, when mm-hmm. I realized that I'm pregnant, he yeah. didn't ask me. I agreed to take the letter home for Obama Lomi. Wow. So within a year, I had fallen pregnant. Uh, the letter was written. I took it to Obama Lomi. My negotiations were the, was the very following month. I'm glad my... Um, <laughs> yeah, my dad's brother said, okay, girl, you're not going to marry... He, he was of the view that we should not make women marry too expensive mm. such that people does not feel the sense of entitlement. Yeah, like they bought you. Mm. So my lover was very cheap, man. Mm. Very, very cheap. Mm. He wanted it. Ah. <laughs> In current terms. <laughs> you know. Yeah. But then what I want to know is that were you making more than him? My first job, I was making at least 10% more than him. Wow. And by grace of God, I kept on studying. Mm. Um... I gave birth to my daughter in December. Mm-hmm. The following Jan, I was at vets mm-hmm. doing my postgrad mm-hmm. while work, widely because of the stitches. Wow. While working because I didn't have a, um, I didn't have my time to leave. Eh? It was no work, no pay. Yeah. So I gave birth, went back to work four weeks later and was back at vets. Oh, started at vets while working. After work, I'll go to vets for classes. And uh, yeah, my career took off. I mean, by the end of the second year, I was making maybe 30% more than him. By year four, I was doubling salary. Wow. And so on, so on. So the hatred. God oh, more. Or the discomfort. Yeah. Or the manifestation of what I knew. Mm. Became. At this point, you're with your husband, who you are making double what he makes, right? Or more. Um, more, yeah. of, more than double by what he three makes. three of marriage, the daughter is like one and a half, going for two. Wow. The first one, yeah. Would you say his mistreatment towards you, like, escalated? I think it was always there. Mm-hmm. And I always spoke about the experience of where I felt tumbled down the stairs, wouldn't want to get me water, mm. didn't take me seriously. He was irritable, like, with my illness. And because I was pregnant, that was my first pregnancy, right? Mm. <clears throat> and me giving birth alone. I was alone, mm. and me um, coming out of hospital, I think my daughter was like six days or mm-hmm. so, and I was so sore from the stitches, I wumbling, and I had epidural, it was a lot of drama in my body, and um, we convinced, he had a discussion with his mom, and he said, say, I'm, we are going, I'm going to the in-laws, so I left city of Joburg on the 29th of December that year with my daughter, more or less five, seven years old, to go to the free state. And I remember on the 31st, my health really took its toll. I was numb, sick, pain. And the cousin had a car, came and took me to a doctor. He had gone to see friends in the township. So for him, it was like, yo, girl, you, my mother's going to take care of you in my mother's house. Well, me, I go gallivanting. So I don't think it escalated. I think it was always there. I think it was always there. But it will be now from take another form mm. or add another layer to it <coughs> in terms of, I will not say financial abuse, mm. but I'm going to use the word financial abuse. Mm. That if you make 10 rand, ne, mm. I'm ensure that the stuff that you pay is 9 rand, 99 cent. Mm. That you, you can't wiggle. You know what I mean? I remember... He had a car, and I complained to say, yo, um, we had then moved to another place. 
we sold that other one and bought another place. Mm. This one was debiting 100% from my salary. Huh? And he'll, he'll contribute his 50% as and when he wanted, you know. And I couldn't buy a car. I was working, mind you, my peers had cars. Yeah. And my salary qualified me to have a car. I didn't have a car. And I remember my other friend, family friend, or our close friend, um, she's much older than me, mm-hmm. um, bought a car and we went to see the car in Yeovil. And on the way back, he was driving the car, and I was sitting on the passenger seat. And I passed a comment to say, the way I'm so drowning in payments of the house and everything, I cannot even buy myself a house. A and car. he flipped. I mean, yeah, a car. Mm. And he flipped. I'm like, I'm so drowning in a house. And, and, and he flipped. He said, yeah, you are jealous. You are jealous. Because... X, Y, Z, but a car, no, mm. you want to make a car. What do you need a car for? Because I took it everywhere. So the essence of him doing emotional unavailability and showing me already that, girl, this one, I'm not in for it. And the financial abuse escalated. And uh, financial abuse went all the way up until I ended my marriage. Even now, it's not paying for maintenance. Even now. So it just... You know, the layers kept, mm. the more... Adding and adding yeah, and adding. <coughs> wow. Like, I, you know, for me, I, I always honest, like, okay, this is not a show for kids, okay? Yeah. I always just try to understand, like, all this is going on. Obviously, like, you're hurt. You, you see this man, um, he does this, he does that. How are you able to still be intimate with this man? Um, I'm going to... Say, <laughs> you said I, I, we agreed that we go everywhere, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> we need to go everywhere. Yeah. Um, there were instances where the intimacy was, I enjoyed it. Mm-hmm. You know, it should be nice. Mm-hmm. And there were instances where we like, you know what? Just, just get it and done with. And because I'm your wife, this is my duty. Duty. Yeah. To serve you. And I remember even in one instance where we'd be, we'd be intimate and then I'd be like, you just get it done. Can you just get it done? And there's sometimes you're like, you're like, I don't want to. You know, like say I have a headache, have this, have that. Or you just tell your brain, you know what? He wants sex, you're just going to have sex and get it done. I'm done with yeah. it. And I know a lot of women that are going through that. Yes. This is not enjoyable. I can't. And it's just like, yes, in let's get it done. No, I like I don't even it's want to like duty. I can't do it. I, I think that that is the reason why I divorced so early. Like the moment that things started going south, because I could not be intimate with this man to save my life. Like I just feel like I'm being violated. I just could not because mm. like I, I couldn't enjoy and I'm someone that very much enjoys. Like I enjoy. Mm. You know, mm, it took us. You know, I, like I want to enjoy myself, mm. but no, it was just like all I could just see was just this beast in jail. I just did not want, you know. Mm. And so, yeah, I do find it very much um, fascinating when I meet women that have stayed for years and th- things were happening and everything, and they stayed. And I'm like, how are you able to actually handle the intimacy moment? Because my goodness, I just don't it's see it's myself intimacy. It's shooting. Wow. It's not intimacy. That it's is ju- deep, hey? Yeah. That is so deep. And I'm saying point blank. And I know a lot of men are going to say, yeah, okay, it's, it's true, it's duty. You bend, you get it, get it done. done. <gasps> and that's it, it's duty. My goodness. Mm. Wow. And you can't switch off. You know, I'm going to make, um, <laughs> now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to off ramp for two mm-hmm. seconds. Mm-hmm. I'm going to off ramp of now. It's like, you you intimate with this guy, mm-hmm. but you imagining your favorite celebrity, <laughs> <laughs> so, so that you can orgasm. Yeah, you, you can, can reach there. You can reach like when your eyes are you closed. Close your eyes, you are no, you can I won't eat, even lie. And then z- 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 and that what I also do. It's just celebrity, and then you got this guy. I had, you reach that. I so had to not, also nice, do that. I used to. But not fake it, but imagine somebody else yes. and, nice and get on with the day. Yes, so basically, so, yeah. like, physically, this is the person that's here. But when you're oh, having no. that with a completely different person, I know, like, exactly what you're talking about. So, a lot of people are just do that. 
Ask his guys. But no, yeah, but you is. cannot be in a horrible situation and someone still expects that you're still very much turned on by them and everything. And I think that that's something about men that they just do not understand. But now I also want to find out with him being so, because that's mean. Like the, the way you described this man, he was so mean to you. Was it also mean to the kids? Yo, hey, you know what, ne? People know me, ne? Mm -hmm. And they know my name and they know him, right? He's, mm. he's the people's people, so mm. people know him. <laughs> and if he can appear now, he'll serve it in no ways. He can't do that. I know. He cannot do that. That like that. He's the ever smiling. Mm. He's the quiet. Mm. He cheated with three girlfriends at the go. But if there's family occasions, if there's anything, you know, even my own parents did not believe me when I say, hey, guys, this guy is mm. like this. And for me, the, the only good thing about him is that he writes stuff. In the divorce plea, so fast forward, mm. um... I'm scared. He left me on the floor. We're going to talk about that experience. But after our youngest daughter, who's now 15, mm -hmm. um, we tried IVF. IVF is terrible, guys. It's expensive Wait, and you terrible. tried IVF? Why? Were you guys struggling to fall pregnant? Yes, for the third time because there was a son. Hey, there was a son to be, to be had. So wait a minute. You guys chose to go for IVF so that you could be able to select the gender of no, the child. No, because I was not falling pregnant. Because you were not falling pregnant. But so. it was also a plus because now you could be able to, to select the gender, right? Yeah. But we were just, you know, pushing mm. for the baby. And if you read my divorce plea, which I'll share with you, one day we'll go into the divorce plea and the process. I, I think, think that is when you come back to successfully yeah. divorced. So this guy in the divorce plea said... Uh, my, I'm the plaintiff. I filed for divorce. Uh, I'm divorcing my wife because she has failed to give me a hair. H e i r. Um, <gasps> And this woman has failed IVF. And my second wife is now pregnant. So, 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 so. And she comes from an unstable family. So he said my family is unstable because my parents divorced. So. He's the most sweetest person. To, he say a bomb in the bedroom, like, why are you wearing that? Oh, no, no, <gasps> you think you're pretty? You think oh, you're beautiful? You you know. you are? And then you go downstairs smiling, hi, kid. How are you guys? In fact, I have recordings of, he called my friends to <laughs> say, this woman, she thinks she's all that. They will record him. The episode of success, Successful Divorced. Yeah, no, I'll come with data. You recordings. Love. Written, yeah, he'll write. So, no, he, he did not abuse the kids, except the fact that he's abusing them now financially. We yeah, are because and he's, he's not manipulating supporting. them emotionally. So you are you are with me or you're with your me. mother? Oh my gosh! Yeah. Is she with me or with your mother? They usually do that, and that's so horrible because yeah. now you're putting your kids in a position where no child should actually find themselves. Like no child should have to choose between their mother or their father because. Children do deserve to have both um, their parents, especially if their parents are alive and willing to be in their children's life. But my goodness, like... My kids are polarized now. So I have three kids, the mm -hmm. two older ones. One is almost on his side. Mm -hmm. And the other one, um, close, I'm close to her. It's both girls. And he said the most meanest things about me to the middle one, you know. And I think the last, in the last two weeks, she had a serious breakdown where, like, you... My dad is marrying this third wife after you, and he's horrible. He keeps breaking people's hearts, and he used to say this about you, that he's marrying a second wife because he allowed it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now I see how mean he was and how truthful and untruth he was. Fool he was, yeah. Untruthful he was, and how much he lied, how much he lied to me, and I'm so sorry, Mom. Now my daughter believed good, I'm the best one. I'm a witch. My mother is a witch. I'm the evil one. I have recordings where he'll take my daughter to a seer um vangeli, what what, and then the person will who say it's the mother. I started being taught witchcraft in only five years. Yo, Yo. <laughs> so are you saying he's mean to the kids? He emotionally destroys the children <sighs> completely. That like that is literally a lot. Hey, I'm really honestly just shocked. Like I really honestly am just shocked. Like I don't even know what to say. My goodness. Mm. Wow. So, obviously, after the, your second-born daughter, you now have a son. After my Was second... he 
conceived through IVF. <laughs> well, obviously, they said the IVF yeah. failed. Then uh, what happened? What happened? <laughs> Niam, juicy stuff. <laughs> juicy hey, stuff. What happened? <laughs> well, is he your husband's uh, son? Yes. Okay. Though he refused in the beginning, it's a son, which I understand, mm -hmm. um, because we are not necessarily very much intimate. Okay. So, um, after my daughter uh, in 2019. Um, I tried IVF in 2018. Mm -hmm. It failed. Mm -hmm. 2019, the marriage was completely on its knees, finishing, finishing. I was turning 40 that year. And um, I got pregnant. Um, we were still having sex there and there. Mm -hmm. And he was still very much a street guy. Now he was a real street guy. Really meaning Friday, Gafita, I change, shower out, the boys out with the boys. He's the one person who's happier outside than in. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to say this sentence. In that most of the time we bury we we marry mm. boys mm. we marry boys, and we try to make them men. fathers and men and husbands, ne? And you find that they are not ready for that. So they are ready for the idea. Go to you, open me. You are beautiful. Mm. I want to marry you and just to hold you in my cage, in my box of matches. While you are in my box of matches and I keep you there, I can always gallivant and come back to this stable box of matches. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah. It's not necessarily that. They, they don't want the whole package of being, you're going to gain weight, you're going to be pregnant, you're going to have kids, it's going to be going to talk about <coughs> bond, electricity, all that. They're not ready for that. Mm -mm. They're really just holding in the, you're a pretty little thing next to me all the time because I married it. Mm. But not necessarily that you are a wife, you're building a family, and I'm ready to be a father. Mm. And It's those people that want to be married but still live like they're not married. He's the one. They want marriage but they don't want what comes with marriage. They only mm. want what benefits them from marriage. They don't want what actually is put into marriage. I dislike those type of people because you can just go ahead and stay unmarried. He's that type of a guy. Mm. So, the, so back to the baby mm -hmm. issue. So I'm in 2019. And I think what made me sit here today, mm. um, I was coming from therapy the other day. I'm still in therapy. I continue to be in therapy. Mm. I'm dealing with childhood traumas and what my marriage put me through. Mm. But also to continue to co-parent with this monster mm. because I have three kids with him. Right? So I'm going to have to continue to co-parent with him. Forever. Forever. Mm. So, and, and he's a monster, and it's what it is. It's not going to change. So 2019, I miscarried. It was in the morning. Mm. We stayed in an estate. We stayed in an estate. And, um, yeah, I crawled out of bed, pain, shit, bloody, and, and, and lying on the floor, trying, crawling, crawling. This guy... <clears throat> literally woke up, I come home late, someone. I called him out, say, hey, guy, yo, mm. I'm cramping here, I'm bleeding, I'm not sure what's going on. He just looked like, yo. And then literally jumped over me, went to the shower, showered, came out, pulled the bag, packed his stuff. I'm sitting there cramping. Um, you know, there's that, um, you've got a carpet between the bedroom and the bathroom, mm -hmm. two dressing rooms, yes. there's that carpet. Oh, okay. That carpet was soaking. In my blood. Bed. I was sitting there cringing. This guy packed his bags and left. I had to crawl back to my bed stand, call my neighbor, please help me. I'm looking for an estate manager's number I don't have. Can you flag down any security card that go past? Oh, please call them to please open the gate. This is my house number. I need an ambulance. And then I don't know what happened, but security people arranged. An ambulance came and took me to Unitas. And then I was there for four days. He was in Devon with his girlfriend, Miss T. And um, three months later, the girlfriend got pregnant and gave birth at 2020. Was it a boy? Girl. So who? And did, and did they rub it in my face <laughs> when she was pregnant? They thought. Hey! They... <laughs> Yo, this one needs a glass of wine. <laughs> I'm sorry. I want to laugh like a street mate. Stop me. I know those. I know those type of situations. He bought boys clothing Ooh. with my second daughter. Ne? They used to sneak out, even with my own helper. Ne? They went buying baby clothes with your helper. Yeah. Oh, okay. To 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 buy the baby's clothes. Baby's clothes. Your baby's for the mistress. clothes. No, I was not pregnant. With your helper. I, I, I miscarried. Yes, with my helper. In my own car, my helper had a car, my own car was just paying for. So he take my daughter and my helper will go with the car, uh, the, the children's car. They'll go shopping. 
So the helper would go with my daughter and he would go in his own car. And sh- your helper knew that she's actually buying clothes for your and husband's mistress. side chick. <gasps> the helper knew the, the side chick very well. The helper used to go to the side chick. She used to be sent to the side chick. Send groceries, do this, go do that. I'm sure she's also used to go cleaning my own time. Me paying her. Yes, girl. They bought clothes and they hid the clothes or put them in my study. So, but what I want to now find out is that the time that you were still pregnant before you had the miscarriage, I'm really sorry for your mm. loss. Um, so the side chick, he he impregnated his side chick the time you were having a miscarriage. Yes, more or less. So I miscarried around November. Mm-hmm. The, the side chick's baby was born in September, so she was pregnant in December. So while I was healing from the, the miscarriage, miscarriage, the side chick was pregnant. So they probably had the baby made or manufactured the time in while mm. I was reeling from my miscarriage. But did you, at that time, did you know that there was that girlfriend? Was it like a no, a knowledge at home now that, oh, there's actually a girlfriend out there that, you know, they're obviously close enough that they can even have a baby? I'll tell you how I find out mm-hmm. just now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So they hit the clothes in the, um, we had two studies and one of the studies, they put the clothes there. And there was one Saturday, my helper was off. I was cleaning, looking for a printing paper. And I see this plastic bag. I'm like, you what what's in this plastic bag? I wonder what is this guy bull? <laughs> Did you not almost Baby paint? Clothes. Boy, could baby clothes at that. There was a black and white Adidas track suit. I remember very well. Sorry for the print. <laughs> yeah, in one of the bags, baby clothes stuff. I was like, what is this? But instinctively, I already knew that there was somebody who's pregnant. I told you, Kikogone, mm. and I told you that I'm a dreamer. Mm. And I thank God for that. Mm. And that most of the situations that put me at risk. <laughs> Uh, that I speak about in successful divorce, almost being killed and so on and so on, I speak about that, that I dream about them. So I had confronted him beforehand, saying, Norman, I'm having these dreams, that it's you and this lady and you are driving my car, but you guys can pick me up and you said, sit at the back. And the second dream, <clears throat> we were at my grandfather's homestead, it's a farm, and you are chasing cows out of my grandfather's crawl up the hill, there's a lady waiting for you, they're wearing a dress. You are dating someone and you intend to be in this person. But the third dream is like, it's you, the lady, the lady's holding a baby and it's a girl. And it was the morning of my birthday, the 2nd of March mm. uh, in 2020. He said, no, he denied it, denied it, denied it, denied it, denied it. Like, there's no way, nah, nah, cheating. Somebody pregnant, no ways, no ways, no ways. But, you know, he was always cheating, always absent, always that, always gone, always lying about his whereabouts, you know. He, Whose money is he using? His own money. Remember, I couldn't, I'm indebted, I must pay for the bond. Like, basically, he's using your money, because the money he's supposed to be giving you for the rent and half of this, I mean, for the bond, half of this and this and that, he's not giving you, which means it's your money he's actually chowing out there. And he also started getting more work from his tender Mm-hmm. Entrepreneuring thing. Okay. So the more work he got, the, the more bigger money. the head mm. got big, the bigger the ego, the bigger the car, the bigger the everything. The bigger the so cheating. The bigger the cheating, you know, the younger the, the cheaties. Mm. <laughs> so it's, it's one of those things that most women do not admit to. Mm. That um, you start with Jimmy goes to Jobek, like I said in the beginning. Mm. And once Jimmy arrives in Jobek and makes it in Jobek, mm. you're no longer good enough. No, you, you are not. You the others that are better. Yeah. So. <clears throat> On my birthday, we went to this fancy restaurant in Princeton. I won't say name. And on our way back, he was driving my car, a big SUV. Mm-hmm. Remember, I'm the ZZZ. I was mm-hmm. thinking, I'm the one. Mm. I'm Imam. Mm. And we got home, we opened the garage. And I remember, as we parked, I was like, I said to him, I cannot shake this feeling that you are lying to me. <laughs> and I hope your lies are not going to bury you one day. You will be buried under the blanket of your lies. And I hope that whatever you're lying about is not worth your family. <laughs> and I had written a note, simple three lines, that I hope whatever you're doing is not at the expense of your own family. <laughs> and I gave him that note. Say, in fact, this is a note for this day. This is my birthday, my 41st birthday. Mm. Yeah. And as we go, we went into the house from the garage. We closed, he closed the garage and we went into the house. And he said, yes, by the way, I'm dating someone and she's pregnant um, and I'm intending to marry her. <gasps> 
on my birthday. On the 2nd of March. 20. How did 20. you receive that? Was that after you had found, already found the baby no, clothes? It I was found before. the baby clothes a week later. Wow. Mm. So, like, how did you feel when he actually said that to you? Like, literally, that was your birthday present? He's horrible. Yes. I sat on the couch. Downstairs, I cried. This man went upstairs to sleep. Now I slept in the guest bedroom, crying. He didn't even say, no, be comfortable in your own bedroom. Let me swap. I'm so sorry. He was no, I, to sleep. He was you are just too nice, James. No, no, I, I, I was not giving up my bedroom. I'm the one that did the kicking out. Get out of my No, bedroom. it's only a, a, a month later. Okay. When I started therapy to say... When you started... This guy, this do you, guy is just, would, would you say that maybe like you were... a, a not to say people pleaser, but because I, I think you were like a husband pleaser. Because I know there are people that are like that. You can't, I can't walk all over you, but your husband can walk all over you like in ways that I can be like, what on earth is that? So do you, would you say you were your husband's pleaser, eh? Absolutely, yes. Wow. wow. Yes, Ninja. Yeah, yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. I was definitely my husband's pleaser. Um, I mean, I've done a lot of projects. Go by when I break, broke down the house, rebuilt the house. Um, Ex-mother-in-law still driving my car now. Uh, yeah, did a lot, Joe. I left with nothing. <laughs> so I was definitely a husband pleaser, Joe. Definitely. Instead of going to Dubai or buying that bag of that brand, I was busy buying cement for his mother's house. But would you say I was that... A husband pleaser. Would you say that maybe you thought all these gestures were going to make him love you? Yes. So you were building houses, doing everything because you're like, okay, maybe if I just, you know, do more, he will be able to love me. And I think that, yes. you know, guys, like with Tuhel and Beg, I love these stories because we get to learn. And if you're someone that is young and you're still out there, if your husband especially is already showing you that he actually does not care, you ca someone cannot... How can I say this? Like, you're not going to make him care by giving him more of what he's already rejecting. Do you understand? It took me therapy for me to understand. Thank that. you, because you already love him. You're already giving him this and that and that. You, you, you can't do more to make, because he's already rejecting what you're giving him. You mm -hmm. actually doubling the dose is going to make him actually be like, yeah, you know, it. like, my goodness. Yeah, so I did more. And lo and behold, um, on my daughter's birthday, mm -hmm. 18th birthday, mm. um, uh, same year. So the mistress' kid was now about three months and it was born a girl. I won't laugh now, please. <laughs> but then I also am just <laughs> interested. <laughs> the time that the child was born, I mean, I'm a girl, you're a girl, right? Yeah. It's not like there's anything wrong with Dissing being a girl else, or no. having a girl. Mm -hmm. I think that is. Of the fact that they were basically trying to diss you and say, oh, it's a boy, but it also is a girl. Because remember, a, a man is the one that determines the sex of the baby. And a lot of black men don't know this part. Like, oh, she can't give me a son. No, you can't give yourself a son. That's why even when you go out there, you're still going to shoot girls because you is a girl shooter. Sh -boo -boo. But anyway, <laughs> I just want to know, like, how was the atmosphere at home? After the child was now born, a girl, the Adidas, the guy, where are they now going? Hey, I don't know, girl. I was not part of that party. <laughs> <laughs> I was excluded. It was him, his mother, um, his Borahan. The his same mother aunt. that you were building the house yes, for. Did yes. they ever like sit you down to say, no. you oh. No. No. Absolutely not. In fact, what he did, he ran home to his family and had a meeting to say, hey, I'm marrying this girl because my wife says I can take a second wife <gasps> and then my wife is overreacting because I found this girl. My wife controls everything. She needed she need to be the one to find a second wife. And believe you me, I was at the... You know, when you are so emotionally vulnerable yes. and you have nothing left... So you're at your that, weakest. That like, Even if you take her as a second wife, I'm like, That was me. <laughs> that was this one. Executive, you know? Crying like that. <laughs> I mean, I know you're laughing now, but I think that that has to be painful to just think of. Um, I don't know. Like, no, how do you actually feel? Mm. Okay, okay, okay. Writing therapy and this. Mm. You know, when you go back, you heal your childhood traumas. Yeah. And... I broke down mm. for at least a year and a half. Mm. I come from a mental institution. I checked myself in. 
I come from taking medication as a psychiatrist, psychologist, social workers. I was suicidal. So I'm not laughing because I'm yeah. masking my pain. Yeah. Because I've dealt with it. You've I've dealt. peeled those layers of the onion deeply for mm. me to not have dealt with myself. Hmm. I'm sitting here comfortable because I know I've dealt with my skeletons. And I'm continuing yeah. to deal with it. Now what I just wanted to find out was, um, you know, with your in-laws, them going for the side chick and the baby, is this before, during, or after you've built her a house? It was after. So hmm. we'd built a house way before. In fact, when I got married, my daughter was like seven. Mm-hmm. I extended for the bathroom. And then when my daughter was like the eldest one, it's like 14, mm-hmm. I extended the, I, I built a house next to the house. So there was some cuckoo there next to the main house. So built two bedroom, bathroom, lounge, dining, garage type of scenario. Mm. And a year later, my daughter was like 16 or so. We took off the whole structure of the top roof, revamped it and so on and so on. So it was after after the big project was done. So I had my house, Nyana, in the yard, in the yard, mm. my small house, and then there was the main house. But now that mm. you're divorced, what's happening to your house? I left with nothing. Not even if I took that thing. That's the part that I've even said. I nothing. remember I once actually made a, 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 a video on TikTok, and I was like, the reason why your husband wants you to help him build a house in his mother's yard is because he knows that's his house. You can live, and he can actually get the love of his life to move into your house and enjoy the benefits of your hard work. Guys, unless if you tell yourself that you're going to build your in-laws a house, never make that decision of building a house in Mama Zala's stand. You'd rather go get your own stand, build your own house. If you divorce, the house can be sold and you can all uh, get a share. Because now, there's nothing that you can do with that house. It was not even about that, you know. Um, I think I'm blessed enough and mm. I'm grateful for everything. And, you know, we let bygones be bygones. Mm. And for me, when I was building the house, it was like my kids are growing. Um, I had two daughters already. Mm. Um, their siblings their siblings have children and so on and so on, his siblings. It was when you go home, you want to have your own space, mm. right? And also, people look at your, at your husband in his big, big car. They don't know that you're carrying... The family. Like the family. Yes. And you also want him to reflect well. Mm. You know? Yes. That's, that's I know. Because hey. I've also gone through you that. But to I didn't well. go to that level, Shema. I don't want to lie. Now when the, the topic of building a house here started, I was like, hey, ma, who's man? <laughs> I was He's, never going to do that. Who's going to get me now? Ah, yeah, gee, I'm, I'm so stubborn, sorry. Stubborn, stubborn. <laughs> I was like, who's money? Mm -mm, We're not doing that. We get our own land and we build our own house because I definitely understood of the fact that you can't say you own a house that is in someone's mother's yard. Do you understand? So, mm-hmm. yeah, it was really honestly just crazy. But how did you actually really feel looking at the people that, you know, you've cared for? I mean, at the end of the day, you did love them. Um, you know, actually now support, like, the side chick, and they don't even really seem to be regarding you because they don't even have a conversation with you. It destroyed me. Mm. I don't want to lie. Mm. It brought me to tears. It, it took me down a deep, deep, dark hole. And <clears throat> for the fact that they know me, and for the fact that he went ahead and told them all the stories, and they believed it. Mm. And I remember it was his grandfather's 100th birthday. 100th mm. birthday. Mm. <laughs> English is failing me there. Mm-hmm. And um, I went, damn me, we already separated. I went because I'm thinking, you know, that's my children's family. family yeah. You know? And... They were getting up in a, they were in a garage and this other aunt same came to greet me. The way they called her, hey Auntie Jay, hey Auntie Jay, hey Auntie Jay, why have you been speaking to her? Why have you been greeting her? Kelly gating. I was at the gate. So they rejected me to the call. I was rejected to the call. The aunt was posting everywhere. We um, have beautiful children. My brother's son has got a beautiful young wife, and this is a beautiful kid they have. The child was being posted, taunted everywhere. So that family, <laughs> they showed me flames. <laughs> they showed me flames. Every 
body, almost. They showed me flames. What advice would you give someone that is in marriage right now? They can already see that maybe their husband, um, you know, he, he cheats, he doesn't treat them right. Um, and, you know, they love their in-laws and they are doing all this stuff to try and also gain favor from, you know, the in-laws, try gain favor or love from their husband. What advice would you give that young uh, 27 year old that is maybe in a situation where you were in? I think I would put it already out there mm. in, in one of my um, breadcrumbs. One, you can never buy yourself into somebody's heart. Mm. But um, you can be the nicest person, you can do the best, you can take the mother to Mauritius. We used to take my mother for holidays, Deben, whatever, everything, flying, born. You can never buy yourself into somebody's heart. That's true. At one stage, I had even taken the sister's son to stay with us. I was paying private school fees for him. <laughs> so you can never buy yourself into any family setting to love you. They'll always love their own. Blood is together and wood. True. Two, you can do good to others. Do not expect them to do good back. Do not expect them to be kind to you. Do not expect them to be good to you. They have nothing. There's nothing forcing them to be good to you. Absolutely nothing. Mm. Three, <coughs> put yourself first. And when you do something, do it from the goodness of your heart. But know that you're not going to get anything back. Mm. Um, we do hope, as we live on this earth, that mm. one day we go to heaven and we'll be rewarded in, yeah. the, in, in heaven. But you know what? People are opportunists. Now I'd buy auntie clothes, take her to shopping center, get and now here's the money, go buy clothes. I was that girl, I was that girl who reversed with a bike with mm. rosary of macro of 15,000. Mm. I was that Magoti. I was the one. So it, 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 with them flipping a switch, it, didn't, it, did, it did not even take them a second. I left with nothing, not even a fatuk, nothing. My mother-in-law is still using my things, the guy is still using my things with his side chicks. He's moved somewhere to town. The house in town is full of my furniture that I paid for, that I bought. Even my first bedroom suit from when you got married. He's sleeping on it with his chicks or oh, wives, wife two, wife three. Okay, we're no longer married, mm. but wife two, wife three, because he keeps on changing them. But then what I want to know is that where did the relationship end with this side chick that actually had a baby whilst you guys were married? Is it still with her? I focused on myself. Mm. I focused on my healing. Mm. And you asked me where the boy came from. Mm. He was already out of the house, staying with a woman, and it was my daughter's birthday, and he was feeling like, oh, I'm so sorry. And, and you know, you have a history with this person. And I had five minutes. I, when I, <laughs> I, I had five minutes of dumbness. <laughs> of absolute, I was not dating, I was celibate. Wow. And I had five minutes of dumbness, and I was coming back from Europe. I do work, do work some in Europe. Mm. I was coming back. I already said I'm an engineer. I sit in the boat in Europe, blah, blah, blah. We speak about my career another day. But nonetheless, I was on my way back. And I could go to Dubai, I'm feeling queasy. Mm. I go there, you know, like, hey, I'm looking for something, uh, nausea. Mm. Um, I'm always flying, I'm not sure what's wrong. And they said, maybe we should do a pregnancy test. It's $3. And I yeah, bring it. Go we in the bathroom, close it, give it back to the lady. Mm. Pregnant. Pregnant. How did you feel? Like, at this point, you're falling pregnant by your ex-husband. Yeah. Uh, and there was a potential guy, such a good guy. I was <laughs> talking to him, he was dating me, and I went, such a good, good guy. And then, oh, I'm pregnant. And I go to the guy I'm dating, like, you choose, I'm pregnant, and it's my ex because now and now you know we are not mm, intimate. playing the, those games yet. <gasps> it's like, no, I'm here for you, blah, blah, blah. But nonetheless, I got pregnant. Um, it was a very difficult pregnancy. It was post IVF, post everything. Mm. My age was an issue. I had miscarried. Um, my tube was damaged in that part. So it was a very difficult pregnancy. And I was in it with my daughter, my eldest daughter, because the middle one, he took care. Mm. To the like, yeah, he was doing all back, those stuff that he was and, doing, yeah. yeah. And yeah, so. Up until recently, which is three weeks ago, when my daughter was crying that my dad is leaving the, that lady for somebody else. So that's what I know about that. So, <coughs> But how did she feel knowing that you are pregnant now? Because remember, you know, this is the thing that men do, eh? When a man comes to you, he will badmouth his wife. He will talk about his wife like she is the demon in on earth. Now, you know, you're pregnant. Like, clearly, sir... 
your organs have been organing. You understand? You know what? I think I still think that she believes I'm um, the worst thing on earth. Um, I know my ex is like that, mm. based on the fact that he would even badmouth me and he'll be recorded. So I can imagine to somebody who doesn't know me yeah. what story they have about me. Yeah. And you know what? It's not my business. Mm. What you say about me, for the fact that you cannot get to me, mm. you are going to change how people perceive me. Mm. And that is their business and your business. It's got nothing to do with me. I've got thick skin. True. That man, I made me strong, Shim. Very, very strong. Hmm. So it's her business. It's his business. It's their story, not my story. Who how did the Mary's? how did the family now receive the news that you're pregnant for for their child now? Um, it was alleged it's not. A oh, child. they would say yeah. Of course, you know, it cannot be. It cannot be. And the child was born, and I was just quiet. He didn't. He rejected the child. He did he do child. any DNA test? I don't know if he did, because okay. he used to work for intelligence. Maybe okay. he did illegally. And okay. I'll, say, I'll tell you why I'm saying I think he did. Mm. Because he rejected the child. My sister was there. My older sister was the one helping me, you know, after the baby was born. And he came to see the child, baby first time. The baby was three days old. He just looked at the baby. In fact, I took a photo. I was lying on the bed. I took mm. a photo. I have a photo. Because I want to show my son that photo when he's mm. older. He was looking at the toy like this. You know, he was so out of it. He was so, like... I don't want to be here. And it's my daughter, the second one, who are like trying to say, that is your daughter, it's a child, come and see the baby. Mommy has a baby. And I was just nonchalant. And when my son was 10 days old, the mother-in-law came, and she came to tell me that I must know that the son has paid damages to the side chick. And the son is building a feminist side, side chick. While I was stitched up, because he's like, sorry, a 10-day-old boy. Huh? The same woman that the you built woman. a house for, yes. the one that she you used to, to give, and, and, and no, that's why, guys, I don't even want to lie. I'm <laughs> not the Magoti that overperforms, eh? No, I'm not. She, I'm, eh, they can tell you the truth. I'm not, someone that, ah, no. I'm not someone that will overperform for you. I, do, I don't want to lie. Because, no, I will do what I can do. What I cannot do, I will not do. But uh, I'm not the Magoti that overperforms. I, I, I overperform. Yeah. Uh, no, I don't. And I remember I said to them, please get out. Just mm. get out because I want to heal. My son is young. I don't need drama. I don't need noise. Just mm. get out. And he said, yeah, that is why the husband has left you. He has left you <laughs> because you don't know how to talk to men. <laughs> yeah, you don't know how to talk to men. <laughs> by the way, my son, <laughs> my son is going to do well by that girl. <laughs> so I was like, please get out. Um, he refused to sign the birth thing. Certificate. certificate. So my son's birth certificate does not have father. Why it says father? It's blank. <laughs> and three months later, they gave my son a name, Manob. They decided out of the blue that, yeah, maybe you must give him a, a name because I think when he's growing, he's looking like you. Or maybe he had done DNA. Or maybe he was confused by And something. then when you even agreed for that name? No. Thank you. No, I, for the time. first time, EJ. No. I let me clap hands for you. No. <laughs> <laughs> How do you, you write that down? My son is Maru, meaning mm. um, clouds. Mm. Um, when I was almost, um, he was coming out almost before time in July at full COVID. And I was lying <coughs> on a bed mm. and I, I read a, a Bible app on my phone. Mm. And it said, Israelites were led by clouds during mm. the day. And um, a moon mm. um, as they were moving through um, the desert on their way to Israel, to the promised land, to Canaan. And it landed that God is guiding me elsewhere. God is guiding mm. me to a safer space. And when I looked outside, I remember it was a winter's day. It was clear blue skies. And there was this beautiful cloud, right? And I'm like, no, my son is Maru. That's it. Like, this is the ultimate. Mm. This is the testimony of Uti. God can make things happen mm. when he wants things to happen. Yeah. Um, I mm. believe in... I honor my ancestors. I don't pray to them, but I honor them. Mm. But I also believe that that played a big part in that when everything is aligned, spiritually, mm. emotionally, your lineage, you know who you are. When you, all those have aligned, mm. God will make things happen, as Isaiah says. And your lineage will also open for doors for things to happen. For someone who was declared in fatal at 39, IVF at fate, blah, 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 I had a very healthy son in night 43. That's my story. Uh, that's a miracle, hey? But then now also I want to find out, does he have a, a relationship uh, with his son? How do you write that down? <laughs> what do you mean? I mean, like, the guy's a boy. 
So he does not have, he has a relationship with kids that he can manipulate. Wow. The more he can manipulate the kid, yeah. the better the relationship. Manipulate against so, the mother. So my son cannot speak, he's not manip- yeah. manipulatable. He wears nappies, he irritates him, he doesn't mm. like anything that's sick, anything that's what. So no, the only time he picks up the son, he'll go pick him like this and go dump him by his mother for three, four days, pick him up and dump him Back in the home. garage by my house. He's never spent a night alone. Or with any side chick, chick, wife, half wife, whatever, mm. with this kid. He doesn't buy clothes, doesn't buy. For the fact that this is homely son, you think he'll, he'll man up. I, I never said that in the big way. You think he'll man up. Yeah, <laughs> but he's not. And, and I think that's who he is. That's fundamental who he is. So, and then now your in laws, you know, your mother in law and everyone, they're good with your son. No, my mother in law will call, um, say, can I please see Give your video call? No. Okay, for you to drop the, drop the kid, kid and so on and so on. And one thing I respect about my mother mm. that's your mother in law. No, my own okay, mother. Okay, okay. And okay. there's a, there's a reason why I'm saying this. Sorry. My mother continued to encourage us to have access to my father's side of the family. Mm. And had she not done that, I don't think I would have grown up in Kwak or be raised in Kwak mm. for me to have better educational opportunities. Mm. Hence, I'm sitting as an engineer. Yeah. Hence, I'm sitting here being financially stable. Mm. I don't think that would have happened. So, but also, Kim mm. Queen. So, my ex used to say, yeah, yeah, you tell people Mkwena. What is even that, Kirio? You can change my surname. But you cannot change my clan name. You cannot mm. change who I am. So that has made me ride through the storms the way I did. And I think for my kids, I encourage them to have a relationship with your father's family, even if they hate me. Mm. I don't care. I'm not there. You cut me, there's no blood. Of, there's no drop. But they cut you, their blood runs in you. Mm. So, yeah, I do allow my kids to go. They go. Mm. And... Uh, uh, whether they feed my son poison, they chuck him in the bin, they take him out of the bin. You know what is their business? They have blood. It's my son. Yes, I absolutely love him. They can do anything to spite me. But for me, I'm doing the right thing for the kids to yeah. know their family. No, you definitely are. And I think that if it's at a point where you do not see any danger, you know, like any danger to the child, then it's not a problem. But I think that if it's a matter of, because I know there are certain uh, families that are really horrible, hey, mm. where in, when you have a child, you can actually see that, ah, these people can literally um, harm my child, you know, because of their own craziness. Then I think that's when, obviously, as a parent, you also do um, step in. But now I really also just want to know if maybe there was like just two pieces of advice that you would just give your younger self your younger you that it was not that had not gone to therapy yet what would you say mm, the biggest mistake i did i call it a mistake mm. was <clears throat> getting married at the age that i did i was only 22 mm. i did post my photos all over the <laughs> <check show. laughs> i was getting married at that age and I was looking for a father figure, hmm. whereas I should have dealt with, with your my daddy issues, abandonment, and my own hmm. daddy issues. So I'm saying it in bold: <sighs> deal with your daddy issues, ne? Before you go into any boy's arms and you think that they're going to save you, they're not. In fact, my ex used to tell me, "Your father is useless. He left you guys, but he's doing the same. He's useless. Not maintaining his children." So they will use whatever ammunition they have about your background to hurt you, too. I know women now, I'm seeking for a rich guy, seek for a kind man. Mm. Seek for someone who's kind. Because whether you're hungry, whatever you start, you start together and you grow together. Seek for a kind, hardworking man. Mm. I think most women, we, <clears throat> we comment on social media, how can this guy leave the children? How can this guy do so? No, you're not seeking for a kind man. And number three, this one is the biggest. Mm-hmm. I did not have the spirit of discernment. I was a church girl going to church. I grew up in a, f- a loving family, church goers. Um, I was um, confirmed at the age of 16. I did not pray for for a husband. I didn't know. I was too young to know that you must pray for a husband. I'm not dating now. <laughs> Please don't DM me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> don't DM. 
I always say, I'm, I'm at this point of my life where if I want to go to Spain tomorrow, I go. If I want to mm. go to America tomorrow, I go. I afford myself that life. I buy myself flowers, I have a driver. So I afford myself that. So you must be adding vision to my life. As yeah, kids, that's right? true. So, <clears throat> but I'm in a season in my life where I pray God to send the right person my way. Mm. And I think sometimes we take that for granted. No, I didn't. I didn't. I prayed for my marriage while that ring was heavy on my finger. I was praying, God save me, please chase the woman I was dating my husband. Mm. But I was not um, a praying man. And he used to say to me, I agree you are praying. I agree you love singing hymns. Sing hymns and pray hard, girl. Pray hard. <gasps> He used to As say he that cheats. To me. Yes. The nerve of he him. He used to say that to me. <gasps> Sing hymns and pray hard. In fact, I even have it in writing. He used to send me WhatsApp saying that. Sing hymns yes. and pray harder for him to stop cheating. Yes. My goodness. So so it's it's so those are the two pieces of advice, ne? Seek God in your relationships. <laughs> Deal with your daily issues. Take time. You know But be financially secure. No, yeah. I don't know, be financially secure. When I left my marriage, or oh, one thing that is good and is bad, ne? Mm. I'm also to blame partly for my marriage. Mm -hmm. Because when I realized that this guy is hopeless, mm. I started working harder. I always started. I always took the most difficult project. I worked in most African countries and, and, and. So I was securing the bag harder mm. while I was with this guy mm. and also feeding um, his ego and making sure that I buy family to love me and so on and so on. Mm. But... Do secure the bag, mm. girl. But now, when you are 27, 28, you get married. Don't relax. Relax, mm. relax you will see. You will, you see. will see. I I literally always say this. You're saying exactly what I always say. Mm, especially when you're talking about like the daddy issues. I'm actually like, I'm single right now, you know. And I know some people are going to be shocked. But I'm actually single right now by choice. Um, and I, I told myself that the first half of this year, I'm going to just be single and I'm going to actually go to therapy because I want to deal with my daddy issues because I have a lot of daddy issue, um, trauma, you know, mm. um, and I did realize that I actually chose to marry the man that I married because of my father mm. and I regret that so much. I looked at, I want the complete opposite of my father. And so just because this guy, he was not ambitious, you know, he was not loud. He didn't talk too much. He didn't do, I literally went for someone that I, I really, I, I wonder, he wasn't my type, mm. but because I was like, he's the furthest thing that I see from my father, then he must be the one and look at where, uh, where I am today, you know? And so I think that's very important because I feel like most of us, especially as, as, as black women, we do have daddy issues and that's a very valid point that I'm also taking and I'm definitely also going to therapy just to deal with my daddy issues, you know? Um, and when it comes to making money, guys, I'm telling you, if you don't have your own money, thank God for money. Because mm. Lina year 2020, I don't know, I wouldn't have survived if I didn't have money. Mm. Because the moment everything started, I went and I bought another car cash. Mm. Do you understand? Mm. That's the car that actually transported me out. You're not going to have a plan out if you do not have money. That's mm. why it's very important to have your own money as a woman, you mm. know? Mm. And um, I fully just agree with you. I really, really do, you know? Um, I think maybe the last question that I'm going to go ahead and ask you is, even though I don't want us to go, but I know time, but I want, I want you to just give advice to that woman that is a powerhouse. You know, maybe she has her own business. She is a very successful woman. Um, or she, she is an executive in some big company. She's a big shot, but she's a dormant at home. Um, <clears throat> sick therapy. Mm. And I tell you why, no? Therapy is anonymous. Therapy is discreet. Mm. Therapy is your business. And when you are at that level, you are able to pay. I used, I was on my husband's medical aid when I started therapy. The divorce was not finalized. I paid cash for my own therapy mm. because I knew he would use it against me. Like Lambo, I said she's mad. You see now, mm. she's seeing a psychologist. Yeah, she's mad. She mm. used to say that to people. So seek therapy. And for me, um, it's my daughter, my eldest one, who pushed me to seek therapy. She's, she's graduating now, a psychology degree, mm. to say, Mama, you know, you're in, you, this is not normal. You're in abuse and you're in boil frog syndrome. You're sitting in this thing, but this thing is a big mess, but you're sitting in it. Mm. And it opened my eyes to seek therapy. And only in therapy, I understood what narcissism is. Mm. 
what psychopath is, what emotional destroy means, what financial abuse is. These words that I'm using, daily mm. issues. It took me, I'm in year four of therapy. And wow. now and then, if uh, I'm not too busy, I do check myself into a mental institution. Wow. I do go there for 21 days. I deeply immense myself in that experience. Um, so that is part one. Mm. Two, um, I'm into alternatives. So what do I mean? I hike. I'm a certified yoga practitioner. Mm -hmm. I'm seeking to go to Bali to do alternative healing, emotional healing, emotional release. Seek alternatives. Mm. And, you know, if you go to yoga, there are moments, breath work, um, meditation work. I meditate a lot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, earlier on I was saying to meditate. Yes. That's why I'm such a space of calmness. Mm. I meditate a lot. Mm. So seek alternatives, but seek therapy. Therapy would not gossip about your business. Therapy would not tell your business. And it would be empowered for um, implementing other methods. Mm -hmm. Whether you stay, you'll be more resiliently staying. And uh, whether you live, you'll be more empowered to live. And born, <laughs> struggle love is not necessary. Oh, thank you. Uh, struggle love. I've been with this man for 18 years. I'm not going to leave me. Not it does not make sense. What are society going to say? Struggle uh -uh. love is not necessary. No, struggle love no. is not shame. I don't want to lie. How many years were you with your ex, husband? 18 years. You oh, see, plus struggle, love, plus thank you. Of divorce. That, Nikili, Go, even Nikili. when you say happy 10 year anniversary, you know that 10 year is a hard 10 years, you know. But anyway, um, thank you so much for actually joining us, and I do honestly hope that. Um, you know, there are people out there that um, some of you guys have watched and maybe you're in the same predicament and you can be able to just watch and learn from this. Trust and believe, okay? You have your own future in your own hands and no one is going to come. No one is coming to save you, hey? No one That's one thing that I actually learned about life when I was very, very young. And I think I'm so grateful for that. No one is coming to save you. No one is coming to save you. And we thank you so much for actually joining us and sharing um, your story. You are definitely going to come back for Successfully Divorced and we're going to go into even more stuff and I'm super excited for that. But Ninjas, thank you so much for joining us for our first episode of Season 2 of To Hell and Back from Wamine Chifazawaru and of course Joe. It's going to be goodbye for now and Hello. we'll see you guys <laughs> next time. Mwah. <laughs> Thank you Bye. so much. Thank you. <laughs>